from Union Square in downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering PagerDuty Summit 18. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit 2018 at the Western St. Francis Union Square in San Francisco. It's a beautiful day outside, really a historic building, and, and we're happy to be here for our second PagerDuty Summit, and our next guest, super excited to have him. We didn't have him last year. He's Alex Solomon, the co-founder and CTO of PagerDuty. Alex, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, so we were just talking a little bit before we turned the cameras on. You started this little adventure in 09, so it's been nine years. So what, it, I'd just love to get your perspective as you come to something like this and look at all these people that are here to, to see you know, what started as just a, you know, a germ of an idea back in your head nine years ago. Yeah, it's exciting to see uh, such an amazing conference. We have over 800 people here today and it's definitely buzzing. I, I can feel the excitement in the air. Right, well Ray Kurzweiler is the keynote. That's, uh, yeah. that, that's <laughs> getting right up there. <laughs> exactly. And really a, an amazing story and, and one of the things that was that was key to Ray's topic was, you know, kind of the accelerating technology curve in, in terms of power and performance, and it's not linear; it accelerates. and And you guys have seen a huge growth in your business and your throughput and all the incidents that you're reporting. And now you're talking about BI and using machine um, machine learning and artificial intelligence to make some sense and to help filter through all this phenomenal amount of throughput. So how are you? How do you see that opportunity? How are you guys grasping that opportunity? What are you going to do with, uh, with that machine learning? Sure, so about three months ago, we uh, launched our new event intelligence product, which is all about um, capturing the, all the signals coming out of all of your different tools. Think like monitoring tools, um, things like ticketing systems, collaboration tools like Slack and uh, processing all those signals, uh, mostly events and alerts, and filtering out the noise. So a lot of alerts and events are not necessarily relevant for someone to, to get paged about in the middle of the night. Maybe it's a false alert, maybe it's something that has gone up and will fix itself. Right. Uh, so it's about fi uh, filtering out all the noise uh, in there, and it's also about automatically clustering and correlating related events. So we take those uh, events in and then we group them together into incidents and we determine the surface area of the problem, which systems are affected, and we uh, page those people and only those people uh, so that they can respond to, to the incident. Right, so do you leverage kind of the, the total learning of the PagerDuty system um, in kind of an anonymized way so you can leverage the multi-billions of dollars worth of incidents to get that, that type of learning? That was one of Ray's you know, key themes. It helps if you have a billion of something if yeah. you want to start applying some of these uh, machine learning techniques. Exactly, so, um, so the more data you have when you're applying AI and ML, the better the, the results will be. And we have over nine years of data that we've accumulated since founding the company, and we leverage that for pattern recognition. So for, I'll give you an example. If you're looking at an incident, you just got paged for something, or multiple people got, got paged, and you're looking at an evolving situation, our algorithms will automatically look in the past and see, has this type of problem happened before? Has, have you seen this type of incident before? Have you seen these events come in before that are similar to this? And if so, what happened last time? Right. Who's, who solved it? What was the resolution? So you can apply that knowledge to the problem uh, and resolve it much faster. Right. And so, is it, and so you do it both within the existing company and their kind of ecosystem. So yeah, Joe solved it last time, Susie solved it yep. the time before, as well as to get more of an aggregate of kind of an anonymized of, you know, we see this pattern over and over and over, this might be this might be what you're looking at. Yeah, and we we haven't done the ag the aggregate um, picture yet, but it's something that we're very excited about because we have the potential to become kind of like the the internet weather, where we can tell based on the number of customers that we have problems with the internet, such as let's say uh, one of the public cloud providers is having an issue. Well, they have lots of customers that are PagerDuty customers, and they can now see oh we have we're seeing all of this additional incident activity in this part of the internet. Right. So there's something going on. Right. And we can start, uh, this is an opportunity that we're very excited about, start telling, being able to tell, oh, there's a problem with one of the cloud providers, there's a problem with one of the ma 
big infrastructure providers that that is commonly used by a lot of different companies. Right, because because so many of these systems now are so interdependent. You got all these APIs from all these different applications, yep. all these different cloud providers, and the whole thing stitched together. So trying to figure out where that little uh, the glitches is not necessarily as easy as when you kind of controlled everything. Exactly. It's funny too because Jen had a line from her keynote which she just triggered. She said, you know, we're we're the ones that want to be up when the rest of the world seems down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let me expand on that a little bit. So you were the founder. Um, Jennifer came in a couple of years ago, if I, if I recall. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure everyone loves, you know, kind of the classic um, entrepreneur tale uh, who like to watch the show. You know, you founded it, you got it to a certain point, and at some point, you know, you decided to kind of bring in a new CEO. When of you can talk a little bit about kind of how that process went down, um, you know, kind of your thoughts as, as a founder um, of, of making that transition transition to see your company go from this stage to that stage? Sure, sure. So yeah, I was the, the founding CEO. Um, I built, well, me, not just by, by myself, but with my two co-founders and with a great team that we hired, we built the company from zero to over 50 million in uh, annual recurring revenue. The company, when, when we decided to make that transition, had gone to about 200 people or so. So a pretty good scale, yeah. uh, starting from nothing. Yeah, to 50 and, million run rate, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I'm a first time entrepreneur, right, so I haven't right. done this before. Um, and at that point, um, we had a lot of work to do on the product side of things, like a lot of exciting new things, such as event intelligence that we just launched uh, earlier this year, and uh, other other uh, products around analytics and visibility that we're announcing here today. Um, but um, I found myself uh, spending a lot of my time inside the building, hiring and managing, and I didn't get enough of an opportunity to talk to customers and think about product and think about the vision. What should we be building? next. Right, right. So I, w I wanted to kind of go and focus more of my time in that direction. I initially started by thinking maybe I can hire a COO, like a chief operating officer, to run sales marketing and I can focus on product and engineering. And uh, did a lot of due diligence and talking to other CEOs who had been there and done that and realized that while that may solve some problems, it introduces new ones and that the best bet is to find a world-class CEO. Like the best people out there in the world are going to command that title right, and are right. going to want that role. Right. Um, and I can still get to focus on product and on talking to customers and on vision by replacing myself and taking on a CTO role. So that's what I ultimately decided to do. Had lots of help from the board was very supportive in this decision and they helped a lot with uh, the interview process for and the screening process for finding uh, Jennifer. Well you did good. We've known Jennifer for a long time so I think that was one of your better hires uh, Absolutely. in the long history My of the best company. Hire. Your best hire. Very good. Well and, I, and again congratulations. It's funny you know it's, it, you see it over and over right. Overnight successes that are 10 years in the making. Yeah. You know the, Clearly, your last round of funding was a huge validation uh, on your guys' strategy and where you're taking the company. And then I just want to call out to you, you guys were chosen uh, for the Ernst & Young uh, Co-founder, wait, hold on, Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2018. Yeah. So Ian White, which is funny, because you always think of that as, as maybe a little company just getting started, right? A really early entrepreneur, but you guys have been at this for nine years. Again, really good validation as to where you are in the market and, and, and people realizing the value that you guys are, are delivering. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. All right, Alex. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes from, uh, from, from I'm sure, a very busy couple of days, and uh, it was great to meet you. Absolutely, thanks for having me on the show. All right, he's Alex, I'm Jeff. We're at PagerDuty Summit 2018. Thanks for watching.